Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. Today I'm going to be going over my different streams of income as a photographer. I feel like the title of being a photographer can mean so many different things. I feel like when I introduce myself as a photographer, they maybe assume I do weddings or they assume I do like senior portraits. There's just so many different categories. There's concert photography, editorial work. You can shoot full time for a brand. And then within those categories, there's just different styles of photography and different things you can do to make a living, even if it's just a few dollars a month because over time that can definitely add up and hopefully this maybe gives you some ideas for how you can make a living as a creator or a freelancer or if you already do that maybe this can expand upon your own streams of income also a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video we'll be talking a little bit about them later on so I thought we would break it down starting from the things that earn me the least amount to the most amount and I think it might be helpful to mention that I got my start with photography through doing social media so many of these are sort of geared to that the first thing is affiliate links. They're basically a specific URL that contains a specific person's ID or username or code or something like that that can record the traffic to a certain advertiser's website. And for how to get something like this up and running, you can either be in direct contact with a brand or there's a ton of sites like Peerspace and Amazon. You can just sign up yourself without communicating with anyone from the brand. I feel like this stream of income in specific is kind of like you get what you put into it. So if I'm shooting with a specific sort of lens filter or a light and I'm getting a ton of questions about what I'm using, if I want to, I can take that extra step and go to the brand's website or contact the brand to get that specific URL or code so I can make money off of the purchase. And that's kind of why I say you get what you put into it because the more you push out these different codes and links, the more people will see it and the better chance there is for someone to actually buy something. I know with Amazon affiliate links in specific, if someone decides to shop on your storefront, it doesn't matter what they buy. If they are going to buy something and your link is still embedded in the URL, you will make a purchase off of that. So I remember someone once bought like a trampoline off of one of my links that was for like a camera or something, which was a great day, but it's just, again, super unpredictable. Some months I make a few dollars to a few hundred, and then there's been times where I've made thousands of dollars just by my links being out on the internet for people to search up. Moving on is now a list of sort of physical or digital things people can buy from me. This sort of percentage definitely increases from the previous sort of affiliate links because now you are providing the product yourself. With this sort of thing, you know, you're taking risk, you're sometimes in investing your own money into something like merch or designs. And not only money, you're also investing time if you're creating something like prints. For me personally, I have things out there like phone wallpapers, and then I have two photo books out, Luminescence and Ultraviolet. There's so many different ways you can go about even producing these things. You can do sort of like a made to order situation, so you're not taking so much of a risk when producing these items. For me and my photo books, I ended up going through a publisher. so. I didn't have to do any of the sort of upfront costs, but that means I got a lower percentage of the purchases that were made from people. I feel like as photographers, we have so many skills that we can sort of utilize. So definitely get creative and think about what could work for you. And if you don't have that money to invest in a photo book or prints or something like that, you can always create maybe an online course or an online guide. Unless you're hiring people to film it for you and edit it for you, that doesn't take much upfront costs. It just takes a lot of time, but it's really fulfilling to be able to be in full control of something you're putting out into the world. Moving up, the next one is Google AdSense, and this is the money I make from the YouTube videos I put out, so literally the one you're watching right now. YouTube puts ads across your videos and you make money through the views that you get, and the money you get per view is so different across different channels on here, and it also depends on the topic you're talking about. I tried to do a little bit of research and I saw that it's roughly two cents to two-ish dollars per a thousand view. So it's definitely a large range for what you can earn. Next up is licensing and usage. This is definitely one of my favorite ways to make money as a freelance photographer. And that's because the work on my end is pretty much already done. Aside from wrangling different things like location releases and model releases and figuring out the rate with the client, the photo is usually already selected from whatever brand is reaching out. So they'll sort of come to me and find a photo of mine throughout my Instagram 
Instagram or my website and want to use that in their own promotional campaign. And I think what people might get confused about with this is that the image doesn't actually have to feature the product or the brand that is trying to promote it. It could just literally be a portrait of someone where the location or the colors just make sense with the overall vibe that they're trying to put out. This is also very dependent on how long they're using the photo. What's like the territory? Is it just within the US or is it worldwide? Is it going across their website or their social media? Or is it going on like a billboard or in stores? So all these different things sort of fluctuate your own rate. And although I said this is my favorite one, it's also definitely one of the hardest ones to figure out what to charge a brand. I figured out my rates just from past experiences and being able to figure out what budget a client has. There's also calculators online that if you input those certain things about the usage, it'll kind of output a rate for you. The only thing is that those aren't always accurate. They're definitely a good thing to use as a jumping off point, but I wouldn't take that for fact. Next up is pretty simple and that is photo shoots. This isn't the highest one up on my list and that's because a lot of the photos that I post on Instagram are actually just test shoots with different models or a fun shoot with a friend, but I still do a ton of different paid photo shoots that you don't see and that's because they're usually for like family or friends or someone I'm being referred to by someone I know. So it's just word of mouth usually. All right, we made it to the final and largest source of income that I have as a photographer and that is brand work and brand deals. When I think of the word brand deals, I always think of just the influencing world, but I think as a photographer, it definitely looks a little different and that's because I'm generally behind the camera. Sometimes I'm in front of it, but as a photographer, I'm able to provide really high quality images and videos for brands to use for their campaigns and not necessarily always posting to my social media about it. Sometimes they literally just want a few select images for their own use. And this number fluctuates drastically, again, depending on what the client is asking. And if it's in the social media realm of things, are they looking for a YouTube video? Are they looking for an Instagram post? Are they looking for me to share to my Facebook page? There's so many different things, but especially as of recent years, brands are definitely leaning towards this route rather than hiring a whole production team because although influencers and photographers within social media can charge a lot of money, in the long run, they're definitely saving a lot because instead of hiring a whole production company that has a ton of different people to pay out, they're hiring just me, giving me a budget to delegate out how I want. And now I've been doing freelance photography for almost nine years now, full time. And so I've developed a lot of different awesome relationships with these different brands that now fully trust when they have an assignment for me that I'm going to come through and complete it with all their sort of expectations that they have. A brand that I have worked with for a while now is Skillshare, so a huge thank you to them for sponsoring this video. I'm sure you know what Skillshare is by now, but if not, they are the largest online learning community for creatives. Their classes are led by industry pros and cover a super wide variety of topics like photography and videography, illustration, painting, graphic design. I even have my own class on the platform that is over an hour of me prepping for a photo shoot going on the photo shoot and then going back to the studio to edit the photos that we shot. Skillshare really emphasizes a learn by doing approach. So after you take a class, you can create a project based on what you learned and upload it directly on there. Recently, Skillshare has been highlighting these things called learning paths and these are perfect for saving time when searching for a class that you wanna take. And they do this by pre-curating collections for exactly what you're looking for. So you can choose what sort of level you're on, beginner or advanced, the topic you're looking to learn. And then from there, you can track your progress. One of these learning paths that I've been super interested in recently, which is very on brand for this video, is pricing and negotiation for creative freelancing. So this includes three different classes by three different teachers. The teachers touch on things like the debate over working for free and how to approach negotiations with a new client. So all really helpful stuff. So this new year, invest in yourself and your goals by learning something new on Skillshare. And the first 500 of you who use my link below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So you can try one of these learning paths for yourself. And I think that's everything. I hope you guys enjoyed learning about my own different streams of income. Once again, if you have your own that I didn't cover within this video, feel free to leave it below and we can kind of help each other out. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed and I'll see you soon.